so welcome everyone to today's session in the previous class we talked about the the concept of demand and supply and we differentiated between different concepts of demand and supply and then differentiated between quantity demand and demand and quantity supply and supply now we start with uh, another topic that is the difference between individual demand and market demand okay so the market demand is a sum uh, so market demand is a sum of quantity demanded for same product for all the buyers at a particular price so it means that for a given price like if price is 3 if we add the demand of buyer 1 and buyer 2 it will become total demand so total purchase is b1 plus b2 so first buyer is buying 10 units as price as price at price 3 second buyer is buying uh, 15 units at price 3 so if we add them it becomes 25 units so the total demand is uh, 25 so it means that for a particular price if we add all the quantity demands it will call the market demand so the third one is the example of market demand so this way we calculate market so individual person's demand is this line and this is second person if you add all the customers in the market it will become market demand you notice here is that the the for the individuals the lines are steep and for uh, market it is flat so we will we will study that later on what why it is so and what does it mean but you can notice here that this lines looks like steep and this line is flat okay so one possible reason is that here there are many people here there is only one people one person so one person is more sensitive to the price when there are many they are uh, when there are many they can they, they are more sensitive than one person so that's why it is steep and it is flat okay so let's continue to next point next is the firm supply and the market supply so firm is the single seller as we discussed in the first introductory class that uh, firm is a type of seller seller 1 and seller 2 and there is market sell market supply so so at a particular price one seller is producing this much and second seller is producing this much and this is total so this point is s is equal to s1 plus s2 so this shows market supply similarly if price changes then see at a newer price the newer supplies are added to form the new point so these coordinates are actually for this point and this point okay so this is market supply so individual supplies are supplied by one single company so we use firm as an as a name for one seller firm two and then market supply this way here the firm supply is supply firm supply supply one business and the market supply is the total supply of the one industry which is producing a same product so here the q is actually a product so q is a same product otherwise we cannot add okay so here we have we have now shown us the concept of firm supply and market supply now let's go towards next point so what causes causes a change in demand so our uh, now next point is that what we already discussed that the when there is a change in price then there is change in quantity demand okay now we wanted to discuss what are the reasons that explain the change in change in quantity demand okay so so here it is discussed as that when we were defining the demand so we were we were using a word citrus peribus citrus peribus means assuming other things uh, it, all other factors assumed constant so it means that 
So assume that nothing is changing. So there is a negative relationship between price and demand. So this was the definition of demand. So so demand will change when other things change. So these are some some prominent factors that usually change. First is taste and preferences. So we already know better taste or uh, better health benefit can increase demand. So if customer gets an information that the product that he was consuming is now beneficial for health, he will increase its demand. Or if the customer thinks that now it has a better taste, so it will increase its demand. Similarly, uh, price of related goods. So if, if the goods which are, uh, uh, so price of related goods, we will draw its diagram. So, so when you are buying a product A, its purchase depends upon price of product B. So if B is expensive and B is a substitute, then you will buy more A goods. Okay, for the case of substitutes. For the case of complements, when B is expensive, when price of B increases, because they are purchased together, so we, you will buy less of A for the case of complements. So we'll draw that draw the diagram later on. Okay, so let's discuss this point. So next is income of a buyer. So what will happen if income of a buyer increase? So if the product is normal, he will increase the demand. If the product is inferior, he will decrease the demand. Okay, so this way we can uh, see how it is affected. Okay, so let me move to the next point. So income increases, it will buy, it will increase the demand if the product is normal and it will decrease the demand if the product is inferior. Next is, uh, next point is by number of customers. So more customer, uh, the more number of customer, uh, number of, if there are more number of buyers, then there will be more demand. So is, uh, demand will increase if there are more customers. Expectation of future prices. So if the customer thinks that the, there will be increase in price in future, he will buy more today. So this, this means that uh, future, if there is an expectation that future prices are increasing, they will buy more today so that they do not have to buy at a higher price in the future. Okay, so these are some factors that explain the change in demand. So, it, it, for example, here uh, the 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 effect of related goods are shown in detail. So, what will happen if the price if they are substitute goods? So, if they are substitute goods like DVD and DVD player. Okay, let me show it in a uh, animation because the graph is changing in the animation. Let it open. So uh, let's discuss this, this point. So a substitute good, an increase in price of one result in increase in demand for other. What will happen? Let's, for example, tea and coffee. Okay, so if you are comparing tea and coffee, both are substitutes to each other. So if one of them is expensive, then other will demand for other will increase. So for example, we will draw the demand curve of coffee. Here you can see that the price of coffee has increased. Okay. So for coffee, we are changing from going from this point to this point. So this is change in coffee demand. So quantity demand of coffee has changed because price has increased. So what will happen because of it? So because coffee was expensive, 
some of the customers stopped buying coffee where these customer will go they will start buying tea so because the increase in demand of tea is not because of the price of tea so this is increase in demand of tea but here it is decrease in quantity demand of coffee so what it is showing us that since coffee is a related product as compared to tea so if coffee is expensive people will stop buy coffee and they will buy tea so since tea is getting demanded more irrespective of the price of tea because here we are not changing the price of tea so what is happening that this is increase in demand for tea not quantity demand it is demand why because uh, i have not drawn the price line so it is showing us that for a particular price the uh, in, in originally the demand for was, was this much now it has increased so this increase is because of because of decrease in the in the demand for coffee so the customers who were buying coffee earlier let me change the color so customers who were buying coffee earlier which are we, we, who are not buying now because coffee is expensive they are buying tea because tea is relatively cheaper because the price here is increased and it is not changed so they will think that it's better to buy tea now because coffee is expensive so the new customers are entering into the tea market and they are leaving the coffee market so it means that there is an increase in demand of tea but there is a decrease in quantity demand of coffee because it is because of the price hope it is clear now okay so next point is complementary goods so an increase in price of uh, one results in decrease in demand for other because they are purchased together so if the one is expensive the demand for other will also decrease like dvd disc and dvd player for example let's see here that there is an increase in price for dvds so what is happening demand has changed from this point to this point so this is decrease the decrease in quantity demand of dvds why because there is an increase in price so there is a decrease in customers so there are fewer customers where they will go what they will do so since they are not buying dvds anymore so they don't need dvd player too so there will be a fall in dvd player demand so what does it mean it means that for a particular price of dvd player people will buy less dvds because they are not buying dvd discs too so if there is a fall in quantity demand of dvd disc because of increase in price then there will be a fall in demand of dvd player because both are complementary goods so if, so what does let's summarize it let me write it somewhere here so for the case of substitute goods price of substitute goods increase so demand of relevant goods may be good a will increase but here price of substitute good increase demand of related goods which we are understanding like dvd player will decrease so here price of related good and the good which we are studying have a positive relation here price of substitute and the good which we are studying have negative relation so whenever we ask what will be the effect of change in the price of related goods you have to first clarify if it is a substitute or a complementary good otherwise what will happen that it will have an opposite answer okay so let me come back so this was the uh, discussion on re related goods and 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 the uh, effect of related goods for substitute and complementary goods
next we talk about what will happen if the product is normal or inferior so a good is normal if an increase in price results in increase in demand like food clothing and and a product good is inferior if if the increase in demand reduces its demand like second hand goods low quality goods so here we can see that increase in income increase in income is increasing the demand here increase in income is decreasing the demand why because these goods are low quality or non branded these goods are high quality or branded or needed or or highly needed so this explains so if the question comes at what will be the effect of increase in income you have to first clarify if the good is normal or inferior so that you can draw the appropriate graph next is so what causes the change in change in supply so anything that comes under citrus paribus changes the supply so what are the factors it can be change in the price of inputs so if the raw materials are expensive the supply will be lower change in the cost of borrowing so if the firms are taking loan and if the loan is expensive they will reduce production if there is a change in technology or productivity so there will be change in supply change in expectation of future prices so if there are there is increase in future price seller will try to sell it in the future and number of producers if there are more producers there are more sellers and there is more supply so this way we can explain the changes in the supply so next is so what is expectation of role in trade so we have already discussed this i will summarize so expected price higher expected price in future will increase the current demand lower expected price in future will decrease the current demand similarly an increase in expected price in future will uh, will reduce the current supply okay and expected income higher expected income will future in future will increase the current demand of normal goods lower expected income in the future will reduce the current demand of normal goods so this was the basic background then we'll go towards details now we are we are just summarizing what we discussed so demand tells us how much uh, how much people will buy according to the provided prices okay so demand is actually what uh, what is the behavior of the customer with respect to the price supplies tell how much a firm will sell according to the prices prices provided it tells us what is the behavior of a seller for given prices quantity demand talks only about the response to the price quantity supply talks about response to the price movement on the demand curve is change in quantity demand movement on the supply curve is changes in the quantity supply demand talks about response to other factors other than the price supply talks about response to other factors other than the price shifting in the demand curve because of other factors is called change in demand shifting in the supply curve because of other factors other than the price is called change in supply substitute and complement goods vary because of the price so the the related goods are varying because of there are two types and the income effect will vary because of two types Okay. So supply curve, supply curve is showing the changes in the firm production choices in response to the price and other factors, and changes in the demand curve is showing the changes in the behavior of customer choices with respect to price and other factors. So this summarizes what we discussed up till now. Okay. So let's see what's next. so now we are going to study the derivation of demand and supply so i am opening the slide share so that we can discuss so this topic is related to the point that how demand let me write so that it is clear 
so we are talking here is how demand curve is derived from consumer equilibrium and how supply curve is derived from ppf production possibility frontier so we are uh, discussing these two points in now uh, here so it is based upon the graphs so hopefully it will be understandable understandable to you so we'll try to go in uh, in detail with more description so that they are understandable to you so first of all we'll start with the demand so in the previous chapter uh, we studied the consumer decides which product to buy and how much based upon that decision we can find how much a particular product he will buy if the price of product changes so consumer behavior was talking about two products and it was comparing two products but if we focus on one of them we can calculate the demand for that product using that method so let me clear it up so the derivation was hidden so let me open it up okay so let's come back so suppose we have uh, two graphs together in the first graph we are comparing quantity of mangoes with quantity of fish so since its quantities on both side it will be comparing the demand for both so it is actually the graph for consumer equilibrium and here we are comparing price with fish so this is a graph for demand so you will remember it using this so if we are comparing one product with its price it will be either demand or supply when we are comparing two quantities it will be either consumer equilibrium or production possibility frontier so since we are actually talking about the demand so most probably it is not ppf and not supply okay let's move forward so since we have uh, uh indifference curve map which is showing that higher indifference curve is better for us so we we tend to buy more goods when we have uh we tend to buy more, more we tend to get more utility when we are on the higher indifference curve then suppose the price of a product uh, price of fish is 4 so this is a particular in different budget line we are buying 150 fish a uh, 150 fish so we put that point on the demand supply point so at price 4 is 150 suppose price of fish is decreased to 2 so the budget line will rotate outward and our demand will increase from 150 to 300 okay so we can see it here is that uh, now we'll put that point b on the demand supply graph then suppose price is decreased further so the budget line will rotate further outward so we'll put that point uh, and at that price is equal to 1 the demand is 650 okay so if we join all these dots what will happen so so it means that decrease in price is leading to increase in demand for fish and if we join the decrease and increase it's a negative slope then it is an example of demand curve so what does we learn from here that when the price is decreasing the budget line is rotating outward and it is increasing the demand and when we compare the decrease in price with increase in demand and if we join together in a graph we have a negative slope demand curve so this is a way we can draw a demand curve for any particular good hopefully it is clear for you that the logic is that you have to show that change in price in a consumer equilibrium graph and it will show that rotation of the budget line and consumer will pick new indifference curve every time and from that indifference curve he will tend to buy more of that good because it is cheaper and and the, that 150 and 350 and are compared with the decrease in price 
and when you join it there are three dots so the dots are a b and c which are here a b and c so this will be the demand curve so if it is clear for you that how demand curve is made okay so let's move to the next point so we have already discussed in chapter 1 related to the production possibility frontier it talks about how seller will allocate its resources to produce a particular good okay now we talk about that how uh, how they will decide which product they should produce it depends upon the profit that they will get from that goods so we will uh, first of all introduce a new concept this is called uh, price ratio so price ratio is equal to price of product on y axis and price of product on x axis we call it uh, and, and, and the formula is equal to the slope so price ratio is calculated by dividing the price of the product on y axis with the price of product on x axis so it will give us a number it tells us how much one product is expensive as compared to another so if y product is expensive the answer will be more than 1 if x is expensive then answer will be less than 1 and and if the price is 1 it means both products have same price so what is the logic behind it so we are just discussing that we are just discussing that if it is bigger than 1 it means y is expensive what does it mean it means y is more profitable as compared to x and if it is smaller than 1 it means x is more profit able so seller will tend to produce the goods which are more profitable so this graph this method will tell us which product is more profitable and when okay let's move forward so we'll draw that price ratio line so price ratio line will be 45 degree line and 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 okay so the price ratio line uh, is like this and let me so if the line uh, it, this line is a case when the prices of wheat are equal to price of uh, price of computer so if both goods have same price then the, the then the price ratio line will be uh, it will have a slope 1 and i will confirm that it has a slope 1 we will will you remember it using a method uh, that is that if the line has slope 1 then it will make a 45 degree angle angle here so it becomes an isosceles triangle with where where 90 degrees here and 45 degree so this way you can remember so if so slope is actually minus 1 so price ratio is price of x divided by price of y with minus sign so it is slope is equal to minus 1 if both products have same price so this this is the uh, case where both have same price okay next is so if the price of wheat rises so if wheat is expensive what will happen let me clear this point so the curve will rotate uh towards the wheat so if the price of wheat rises the price ratio and the slope becomes larger than 1 and it rotates left to become flatter so if wheat is expensive the curve will become flat as compared to 45 degree and and if uh, computer is expensive then it will go steep so it means it means that if the product x is exp y is expensive it will become flat if x is expensive it will become steep so what does it mean that this graph this line has a slope minus 1 
this line has a slope less than minus one, but means that it is between zero and minus one. And the line which was flat has a slope between minus infinity to minus one. So it was bigger number, smaller number, and in between. So this way, price ratio shows us uh, that it is uh, how it is changing. Okay. So let's go towards this diagram. It will help us to clear more regarding this price ratio concept. So suppose now we are comparing the same diagram, similar diagram. So we have quantity of wheat and quantity of computer, and we are comparing in PPF, and we have price of wheat and price of computer. So it is price ratio line. Okay. So let's see. So when uh, price of wheat is n and price of computer is five. So wheat is expensive and uh, computer is cheaper. So the line is flatter because wheat is expensive. So we'll draw, we make up, we move this line parallel and draw it on PPF. So we found a point. So at this case, for this case, and this case is written here, the firm is trying to produce 100 computers. So it means at P W uh, at, at P C uh, is equal to five. The supply of C is equal to hundred. Okay. So supply of C is equal to hundred. But what will happen if computers are expensive? So it will rotate outward because computer is expensive. So it and and, and I will draw it parallel here. So the supply is increased. So at price of computer is equal to 10, supply of computer is equal to 120. It was 100 earlier. Okay, so it means, this is showing us that when computer is becoming expensive, the line is rotating towards steeper. And if I move this parallel and try to touch it once, so it, it is showing us at this point. And when it is steeper, the touching point is somewhere here. So this is showing that there is an increase in supply. Similarly, when I move forward, so the second now is the case is when the price increased to 15, what will happen? So if the price increased to 15, what will happen is now price is 15. So the curve will be steeper and it will draw drawn here the price becomes 150. So at price is equal to 15, supply of computer is equal to 150. So this way we can see that, that, so this is showing us that when there, were, there is an increase in price of a particular good, since increase in price, uh, increase in price is representing increase in profits for seller, so what he will do, since computer is becoming expensive, he will allocate more resources towards computers so that he can produce more computers so that he can extract more profit from the market. So, so if you draw them together, let's see what happens. Let me clear the diagram. Let me move forward. So this means that price led to quantity rise, okay? So let me draw it again in clear form. So now we are comparing uh, with uh, price of computer and quantity of computer. It means we are here talking about supply and here it is PPF and price ratio line. Okay. So at price five, the supply was hundred. So five and hundred. At price 10, supply was 120, so price is 10 and 20, 120, okay. At price 15, the price, the supply was 150. So when we join together, this is our supply curve. Let's go back. So what does it show? It shows us that increase in price 
increase the, the chances of profits so what the seller do it will move towards the expensive good because increasing price is showing there so price of c increase is pointing to a point that the profits which is shown in terms of pi from computers is increasing so firm will shift its resources towards computer if the resources are shifting towards computer it means there will be more computers produced so when we show that here so if we compare 100 with 5 and then 120 with 10 and uh, 150 with 15 we can see it here then it will become point a b and c so these are a b and c so it is positively sloped supply curve why it is positively sloped we have seen it here so when the product is expensive there are more profits and the seller tries to produce the thing which have more profit so it means there is an increase in supply of that good hopefully it is clear for you so let's see what's next 